Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra thin dress watches to solar powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT. Com. Hello and welcome back to the Pod and Together podcast. My name is Adam and I'm joined by my co-hosts Becca and Nicole. Hey guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. I we I feel like I always sing that. Like I I edit these episodes and I just hear myself and I'm like you're you're freaking annoying. Just always singing. <laughs> you're not always, annoying. Like, it, one. I whenever whenever like somebody says something and a song pops into my head, I have to like sing it out loud, <laughs> which I've done multiple times. I don't know why. <laughs> Gosh, what one? There's. A song by Paula Abdul, straight up. Every time someone straight says straight up, up, I'm like, tell me, are you really gonna love yeah. me to keep me forever? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> Classic. We should Today, sing more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Today, we are talking about plants and pets. But first, we're going to do our catchy up. So, catchy Nicole, ups. catch yeah. us up. What's going on in life? Oh, you know, just a little bit of pests here and there. Okay, so (laughs) I did a video a couple weeks ago on my Apuntia, one of my many Apuntia that had scale. I feel like this is a specific thing that is happening with multiple of my Apuntias. But anyway, it was literally covered in scale in a week's time just like a section of it so I just did a vlog I cleaned it up but I think I'm gonna have to get that out of the soil and repot it I just really wanted to wait until the weather was a little warmer just for my cactus just because I feel like you know they're they're doing okay right now I don't want to mess that up plus I'm moving so I just I don't know but anyway Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna have to get that out of there and I think it has root scale so I think that it's just going to need to either be completely like washed up and see if I could save it or that piece I'm just going to have to toss out. It's like the Yuck. one thing I battle often is scale. And someone told me on Instagram, and now I can't remember who it was. Maybe it was in my comments on YouTube. But they say, are they flying around yet? Do you see them flying around? And I about lost my shit. And I was just like, little frisbees flying around your house. <laughs> Ew. I was like, wait. I don't think they fly, do no, they? No, I was like, no. Oh. Like, I replied and I said, oh, no. Like, because that was my initial thought. But I was like, maybe they got it confused for thrips. I don't, I don't know. But I was like, please don't tell me that scale fly. Because I, I just will start throwing away plants once I see it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know... S- I know scale have legs right. until they decide to create their waxy coat. So I guess I don't know what they look like in their infancy stage. Ugh. But I don't think they fly. I don't think so either. Unless they drink Red Bull, then they can grow wings. Well, <laughs> as per anyone will know. A thing? Is that still a thing with Red Bull? I don't know. It is, yeah. <laughs> Marketing. Hey. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. Don't drink Red Bull. It's really bad for you. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um but yeah, so that's say that again. That's um that's my week. So I think I'm just gonna have to repot that sooner than I would have liked to, but you know tis life. Tis being yeah. a plant parent. My my Hoya Grey Ghost has scale and mm. I've like destroyed it trying to get them off. 
uh, because I've been using alcohol and cotton swabs, but they just like some of them are just I don't know. So part of me is like, well, is it really scale? But it is because it does flake off. But some of them like where I've pulled it away from the leaf, it's caused the leaf like to brown in that exact same spot. Yeah. And it just looks awful. Well, that's what happened with my mom's fairy castle cactus. She had it so bad that I was having to scrape it off. And it was just it was scraping off the flesh of the plant. So yeah. it, I think it's just like it depends on what stage it's at i don't know if there's different types of scale there may be but this one that i've recently found it was pretty easy to get it off so i'm hoping that it's just as easy to get it off the roots but i see it creeping back up and i'm just like okay okay (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's not great my booby cactus has scale And it's so hard because it's like all at the very top tip of the plant. And that's like where there's like 8,000 boobs like stacked on top of each other. So there's so many little crevices. And I just, I found it like a week ago and I haven't done anything, which is so bad. But I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. It's at the tip top nip. (sighs) Not the titties. (laughs) I know. Poor little, poor little joy sacks. What can you do? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Joy sex. <laughs> oh, those fun bags. That's what I was trying to go for. I was oh. like, what is the what is the phrase? <laughs> oh, fun no, I bags. You're making a new one. <laughs> Joy sex fun bags. I was going for fun bags. I forgot what it was, so I just said Joy sex. <laughs> That's pretty much the same thing. It's synonymous. There we go. Oh man. Oh, Becca, that's what's the, good the stuff. catch up? What's the catch up with you? Yeah, what's going on? Honestly. With you? Not much has happened, but I did want to share a funny story of Daniel, my husband. He is such a nice guy. Like, that is part of the reason that I just love him so much. It is what attracted me to him. So kind and thoughtful. But listen to this. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We were driving home last night from, like, where were we? We went to the hardware store because we had to get a few things. And there was someone who was uh, stuck on the side of the road, we thought. And so we had food in the car that was warm. Well, it was hot, not warm. And we almost stopped. We were like, ah, but we have food and like someone else will surely stop. So we definitely did the thing where it's like everyone says that someone else will stop and then no one stops. Yeah. Um, hopefully someone stopped for them. But anyway, it was right in front of someone's house. So I'm assuming... Not the point. Um, (laughs) This morning, Daniel went out to work, and he was wearing dress shoes. And, uh, like, the man works, like, in shoes that have traction. Like, he wears boots. Like, he's he's a rugged guy, you know? That's just how he is. So I feel like he forgot that his shoes didn't have traction or something. And he was helping someone who got stuck and was, like, pushing their car. And then he slipped and, like, smacked his face, like, on the car and the floor or something like that and now he has this like big cut on his cheek poor guy and a couple weeks ago I might have mentioned this but he was running down the stairs and he smacked the crap out of his head on the ceiling like on the corner oh ouch I think you just told us that I don't think you said it on the pod yeah so that was like stitches right no just barely did not need stitches thank god okay okay wasn't that Christmas it was like like a few days after Christmas, yes. It was like okay. the day after my parents left and we were just like chilling out. We were ready to just like watch <laughs> movies all day. And then we had to go to like, not the emergency room, I guess like urgent care or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he just gashed his head open. And I'm like, bro, like he doesn't do anything <laughs> halfway. You know what I mean? Like he consistently (laughs) breaks things because he just like pushes too hard or like pulls too much he sliced open his thumb and he absolutely should have gotten stitches but we were in like rural rural iceland when this happened like so far away from a hospital or anything i was like i'm gonna have to learn how to do stitches like because he just is so (laughs) he just injures himself badly like I cut my thumb remember like last week I think and I'm fine like it wasn't that bad but that's like the worst I ever do to myself but this man (laughs) like 
on several occasions has cut himself or hurt himself to the point where he probably needs stitches like at least four times in the last year. I'm like, dude, Yikes. you don't have to do everything with such great force. Wait, hold on. Another thing that he did. <laughs> This was our first time that we went on a trip together. He met up with me in Europe, and um, we were, like, rushing to get off of a train. And I had recently gotten my conch pierced. That's, like, Mm -hmm. the ear hole. You guys know what a conch is. In your ear. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and it takes, like, a year to heal, and it had been, I don't know, like, six months or something at this point. And so it was still, like, kind of sore. I was still sleeping in a neck pillow six months after I got (laughs) it, just for reference. And... So we were getting off the train. We had to get up really fast. And he starts putting on his backpack and he's swinging around his elbows. <laughs> oh, he smacked the shit out of my ear. Like he hit me so hard that my vision went blurry. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry oh. for laughing. <laughs> it's so it's funny. And like he was not even trying to do that. He didn't even notice that he hit me. And like I like got like knocked off and like we had to run off the train. So like my vision is blurry. I'm like swerving around. And like when we get off the train, I just like stop and I'm just standing there like my ear is bleeding and I'm just like oh my god what just happened and he's like becca we have to go we're gonna miss the bus because you know when you travel it's like here then here then here uh yeah oh, so gosh. he did apologize obviously but yeah he was like we don't have time for this let's Good. go and i'm like crying in the street <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is the most severe thing that's ever happened to me. Give me a minute. (laughs) Honestly, like, I never injure myself. So when it happens, like, I really take time to, like, cry about it and, like, take notes on how I could not do this in the the future. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Anyway. What about you, Adam? How's your week? Uh, Any any injuries? No. Um... You know, my back has felt like it could go out at any moment. You know, we kind of talked about that a couple episodes ago. But Welcome to my 30s. So far, so good. I need to start doing, like, back stretches. Ugh, you and me both. I need to I need to start yoga. It needs to be proactive. I need to be proactive about this crap. Let's do um, online yoga together. <laughs> I got the, you know, I got some leggings I can wear. Yeah, you do. They are they are nice <laughs> leggings. Nicole might get distracted uh, yaddy, 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 yaddy. though. So. <laughs> Wait, I saw a TikTok where someone was wearing those leggings, but she put them on backwards, so the oh. like the <laughs> she just looked like she had a camel toe. <laughs> and her friends just recording her laughing, and she's like, "They're on backwards," because there's like a little <laughs> ruffle in the front seam. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no. The joys. The joys That's in life. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's no secret that my dog passed away, and uh, I went to pick up his ashes just, um, I think it was this It was this week, but I've, uh, the, the vet here in town is just so sweet, because, um, because of COVID, like, you have to check in through their, like, drive through pharmacy window. And I mm-hmm. told her why I was there, and uh, she actually, like, came outside, and she goes, it just feels so impersonal to try to, like, put this through a drawer that goes out to Aww. you. And she goes, and I just wanted to hand it to you and just tell you that I'm really sorry that, uh, for your loss. And I was just like, she, you know, emotionally, <laughs> I haven't been, like, crying a lot about him as of mm-hmm. late, but, like, that really almost put me over the edge, because I was like, that's that's just so that's kind. That's so sweet. But... I've never been one to, like, want to keep remains, you know, on, like, a shelf. And it remains sounds so weird to say, but, like, I have this box that they gave me with it, and I think it's sweet, and I have his collar, but um, I found a company that makes jewelry for cremated remains, or um, I think they also do, like, breast milk jewelry, which I've never heard of. Like, a lot Mm. of different jewelry for losses, and it's, like, Mm -hmm. just this keepsake. So... It's hard to find men's stuff. Like, I've always wanted, like, a men's ring. Like, even just, like, for fashion purposes. And they're just not easy to find, like, fashion rings for men or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this uh, company, Forget Me Not Jewels, is in Canada. And they had a men's necklace that they they make. Um, And so I think they use resin, but you can choose colors. There's a bunch of different colors. So I actually had to, like, 
package up like an eighth a teaspoon of the cremated remains and, and mail it to them, and then she's going to make me this necklace. So then I can just have it always, and I'm so excited about it. Yeah, that's really cool. I know you shared a picture with us, and it is. Yeah. It's really nice. And they also do, like, rings and stuff, which is really cool. I remember when my grandma passed away, they did um, the funeral home, took all the flowers from, or, like, roses from there, and, like, had this company melt it down and create jewelry from, like, the roses at the funeral, which I thought mm. was really cool. Yeah. That is And then my house pretty. got robbed and someone stole it. <sighs> so upset. That's awful. I know. Um... But I think that that's a really, I think that's a really cool thing for pets because yeah, a lot of the time, like I've lost quite a few pets in the past and we never saved their ashes. Like we were never even given that option, I don't think. So I think that that's really, that's a really cool thing and yeah. a cool way to, I mean, I went, with, yeah. I kind of went like, I'm looking for other ways, you know, I've seen people use it in like paintings, um, or used it to make like glass ornaments and stuff i just i don't know uh i don't know what to do with 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 them you know yeah i think they asked me in the moment when like i was so upset about everything and i you know it was before he even had passed you know before i made the appointment or whatever and so it was like yes like i i wanted it because like you know but now i'm just like well you know what what am i gonna do like Mm -hmm. I have the memories mm -hmm. and I have a ton of photos of him and that's what I'm going to keep and cherish. But I'm so glad that I'll have like a piece of like wearable art to, to just like have him near me. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited about it. And I think it's a beautiful thing. You know, there's a lot of like jewelry out there where basically it's just like a capsule, like a little like bullet type thing that you would just like. Oh, like with it in it. Mm, yeah. yeah I'm I, don't like, I, don't, that. I don't want that. I want I want it to be cute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I don't know if someone's complimenting my necklace and I was like, thank you. This is my dog. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they're going to be like, that's or weird. <laughs> but to me, it's not because I, I love him dearly and he'll be near my heart and I think it'll be mm. beautiful. Yeah. It's okay. If someone, if someone random that you don't know asks you where you got it, you could just be like Target and just move on about, about your day. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I could always just lie. Gosh. Target. <laughs> we don't have to tell strangers the secrets of our heart. No. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have my dogs, my, my dog passed away like a couple years ago and I had his like name tag on my keys and they're like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, it was really sweet. Um, but a cashier asked me, and they're like, oh, what kind of dog do you have? And I just looked at it. I was like, he's dead. And then I was like, oh, like, <laughs> like immediately after I said it, I was like, oh, no, no, but it's fine. Like I'm okay. Like it just like came out. I was like, oh, he's dead. Like because for me, it had it yeah. had been a while, so I was okay. Yeah. But like they didn't know that, and I was just like so. Oh god, I, I felt terrible. I was like, no, no, it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah. been a while. I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh god. This is why I don't make small talk with strangers. You know, because you just don't know. I mean, <laughs> if I'm remembering right, I feel like your keychains look like your keys look like they belong to like a custodian. Like, was it just? <laughs> isn't it like a mass of keys and keychains? Me, mine. Yeah. Who are you talking Becca. to? Becca. Oh, Becca. Okay. Was it? Like, how well, how many keys do people normally have? I don't know. I only have, like, three keys and then a couple keychains, but I definitely used to rock the gigantic tons of keychains from every state I've been to, pictures of my kids, pit keys from old houses, and then my mom was like you know that's a lot of weight on your ignition like you shouldn't be hanging that off of your i was like oh and then i looked it up and i'm like yeah i guess you shouldn't have that many keychains hanging off of your ignition yeah unless you have like keyless start which cars today i don't know yeah i don't know how true. they work i usually have like my house key well currently i have like my house key my p.o box key okay maybe i'm just not i've I, I was did have just like assuming. I did have like a red tag thing that probably made it look more bulky. I don't know. Oh, I have two car yeah. keys. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Two car keys. I had probably like <laughs> a, a house key. You know, yeah. I had two car keys, which made it look really. She bulky. pulls it out, and it's like this big pile <laughs> of ring. No, uh, no. I had a key to Daniel's car. I had a spare. 
Now that we've outed Becca. Okay. For being a janitor. <laughs> a custodian. <laughs> okay, so I guess we can get into our episode, right? Do we have anything else to say? Did I miss anything? Nope. No, we Nothing. should we should get into it because someone We have twenty five minutes. Yeah, someone's got yeah. a meeting. Got it's a gonna meeting. be a short episode meeting. today, y'all. So I th- today we just wanted to talk about, you know, plants and pets. And uh I I have a cat and I know these two have had these two both have dogs, uh, but Nicole's mm-hmm. mom has had a cat. And I feel like I just got lucky because literally Patches, my cat, does not – she does not care about the plants except the ponytail palm. She mm. will <laughs> eat the crap out of the ponytail palm and spider plants. So those I have kept away from her. But other than that, like, you know, a lot of people when they see that I have a cat and they're like, oh, my gosh, like, why do you have all these plants? You have a cat. You shouldn't do that. They're poisonous. And, yes, I understand. And, yes, I want to protect my cat because I love her. But – She's just never been interested in trying to go after the plants. Like she'll literally sit on the shelves with the plants, but she doesn't she doesn't bite, she doesn't nip. But mm, the things yeah. the things that she does do is she will paw out one little lecca ball, like with her <laughs> little paw, then she'll drop it on the ground and then she'll bat it around the floor for hours. Well, like, I mean, can you constant. blame her though? No, can't I can't. Blame her. It, she doesn't uh, try to chew on it, so I mean, what can you do? No, and it's so cute to watch her like palm it, because she'll literally like put her paw over it, and then she'll just like look look at it, and then she'll like <laughs> drop it on the ground, and then just start running after it. <laughs> uh, oh, that's cute. But she does the same thing with bark chunks in my soil plants, and mm. that's annoying because she'll she'll dig those mfers out, and she I, like then the I have like bark. a pile of bark. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yes, I can relate to that. Yeah, Cooper does that. Like to do that. Yeah, Cooper does that. He'll like pick out the coconut out of the soil, and I don't know how he does it, but he will only grab Why the coconut. Why is that? I don't know. Like my dogs are obsessed with chewing on bark, and mm. if there's bark from the firewood on the floor, they will find it. They will bring it to the couch, and they will shred it on the couch. I don't know what it is about bark. <laughs> so like I guess the coconut is like a similar sensation like maybe a little softer, but I will come home after being out and Cooper has removed like 20 coconut chips from my plants and I'm like, "Okay, well now I have a pile of coconut chips like the bark." So, yeah. <laughs> so annoying. He thinks they're dog treats. Yeah. Yeah. So But yeah. Go ahead. Well, I don't really, I don't really know where to go from from here. <laughs> well, I suppose we could just talk about okay. Well, let's talk about like toxicity, what that actually means um, for plants. Yes. Like when a plant is toxic, and like when you really actually need to worry about toxicity with your plants. So I would say if you have cats, that's a huge thing to keep in mind because cats are usually the type of animal that's going to be bitey on plants and chewing Mm -hmm. and you know what happens to the pet after they eat the plant just really varies on the toxicity level of the plant and you know it could be anything from making them throw up to giving them diarrhea to like shutting down their body (laughs) like organ failure so it's Mm -hmm. super important to just be aware like I'm not going to tell you don't have toxic plants like because basically all my plants are toxic and I have animals but I would just say be aware and know the ones that are toxic and just observe your animals around that plant. Uh, especially if you're bringing in a new plant, like pets will usually be curious. Or if you're bringing in a new pet, which I did, Cooper is a puppy. So he was really intrigued by the plants and he sniffs them and I watch him sniff them. And if he acts like he's going to bite the plant, I make a really loud sound to scare him. Because I don't really want, I don't really believe in spanking animals just to, on a personal note. I don't think it works. So I just scare him. Yeah. <laughs> and it helps a lot. I need to be better about the bark thing, but he does it when I'm gone. So, like, not much I can do. Yeah. He waits till you leave the room and he's like snoofing around. Yeah. Yeah. And then honestly, if that's the worst that he does, like, I can handle that. I'd rather him do that than like take a bite out of a plant and have his organs shut down. But yeah, just. Be aware of the level of toxicity and keep those plants 
out of reach if you think your plant your pet is going to be curious. I know that's hard with cats, but you could put them in a room that you shut off to the rest of the house. Um, but you know, ASPCA has a really long list of plants that are toxic and um, you should stay away from them. Also in my book, I have like 120 houseplant profiles and I know whether they're pet friendly or not. So yeah, there's oh, lots of resources. Yeah, I when I first started collecting plants, um, I looked on the ASPCA website a lot to just to find out the toxicity level. And that subscription service that I used, Horty, that you can actually do a pet friendly subscription service. So they'll send you a pet friendly plant each month. But it does it does vary. Like some are mildly toxic, some are extremely toxic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I've just heard a lot of people say that like a lot of the times it deals with like the the liquids inside the plant or whatever, the material will start like creating these like tiny little crystals. So usually it's immediately painful for your pet if it's like a highly toxic plant. So usually if they took a nibble, they would probably stop. But um, like you said, it's just good to monitor their, their actions. Like if you have a cat that's chewing on plants and maybe you didn't even see which plants they chewed on or possibly like, you know, if you're scooping the litter box each day, you can tell if a cat has diarrhea or not, that mm-hmm. kind of situation. Right. But, yeah, some of them are really, really, really deadly with – especially, like, lilies and poinsett- poinsettias. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are And those are very deadly popular – those are, like, super popular household plants around Easter and yeah. the holidays, too. And I think people just – they gift them to other people, and I sometimes I think that they're just not thinking of it, you know? But yeah, I just went on the ASPCA's website and there's, they even separate it for like dogs, cats, and horses. So you can just, and there's a ton of toxic plants on there. So definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. Or house plants for beginners. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it you know. De la plants. Yes. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you can't have those plants again. It just means yeah. you just have to be more observant. At first. Yeah. But if you get lucky, yeah. you get a cat that doesn't care. That's really ideal. I mean... Like patches. When she was a kitten, I would redirect her energy. So, like, if she would start going for a plant, I she always had a favorite toy, and I would just grab that. And as soon as she saw me grab that, she was like, okay, well, I'm going to play with this toy. So I think mm-hmm. redirecting is very important, especially if you're just bringing a new pet into the house. Like Becca said, just, like, monitor their actions and see what they're doing as best as you can and just try to like redirect their attention from something if they're doing something you don't want them to do like getting in your plants or what what have you yeah my mom had a cat well she was technically my cat rusty for oh gosh she was 19 i think when they put her down last year and um she's the reason they couldn't have any plants like once she started getting older and she couldn't jump high enough like my mom would keep some plants on mm-hmm. on like her bookshelf like in the window on like the top shelf because she's like well I know she can't get up there you know but um she's the reason why and I grew up with cats so that's probably another reason why we didn't really have house plants because it was just one of those things where she would just rather not worry about it you know mm-hmm. and you know, a couple of times where we did have a plant or like flowers or something, they would go for it. So she's like, forget it. I can't have plants, you know, but I feel like, you know, I don't know, something to keep in mind. Like if you have pets, but you are also a plant parent, obviously I'm sure you've thought about this. If you have pets that disrupt your plants, but like keeping them in a specific room of your house that maybe has like good windows where you can close a door and you can keep them out of it. Cause I feel like, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, I'm watching, I'm watching my pets, but like you're sleeping too. So like, you don't know what they're doing in the middle of the night and the cats are sneaky, man. They yeah, that's really true. <laughs> <laughs> um, we used to, we used to hear things in the middle of the night and never be scared about it being a ghost. Cause we just blame it on the cats. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so like i think that that's something you can do too or just put them up high enough to where they can't get to them where your plants can still get light but 
But yeah, I remember I remember going to Arizona a couple of times and wanting to get some plants for my mom. And she's like, can it go outside? Because they can't have it because of Rusty. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, she, yeah. Because she would dig in the pot and she would also like bite the leaves and the stems yeah. too. Yeah. Um, about the cats being, I, what was the word you just used? Cats are feisty. Sneaky. Sneaky, yes. So <laughs> Patches is kind of, she's a kind of a little chunk, but I, we feed her like <laughs> she gets one thing of uh, wet food and it's like a very small cup of wet food. I think the brand is like Sheba mm-hmm. and it's like a half of serving. She gets one of those a day and then like a little bit of dry food in the morning and a little bit at dinner time. So, mm-hmm. but she just keeps like, she's chunky. And the other day I woke up. <laughs> Um, in the middle of the night and I had to go out to the living room and she was like deep in a pan of lasagna that we had left out (laughs) and now I'm like okay well this is what she's doing at night she's like literally (laughs) licking clean Uh, because you know when you cook something and you put the leftovers away and the pan's there with just all the stuff that you just need to wash off like sometimes you're just like I'll take care of it in the morning Uh, but now I I can't put unrinsed dishes in the sink because her little <laughs> chunky butt has jumped up there and she just like goes to town apparently at nighttime. She's like, why would I have to eat a plant when I have lasagna? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? she's Garfield. <laughs> I'm living with Garfield. That's so funny. What the heck? The lives of pets. What are no, they doing? <laughs> what are they up to? Yeah, she snoozes all day except for food times. Then she is letting you know, hey, it's time for food for like a half hour before. <laughs> um, but yeah. Is somebody in your home? Yeah, are you okay? Leo is like howling for no reason. Speaking of pets. Are you sure it's no reason? I always get freaked out. Hold on. Nicole, don't don't project your anxieties on her. <laughs> Sorry. I live in the middle of nowhere, Nicole. I'm being a, like that's scary for me. I'm being a mom. <laughs> Listen, grab a knife. Grab a knife. Take us with you. <laughs> I was also going to say like with my dogs, I get a lot of comments and DMs about cuz I post a lot about my dogs. Like I usually show them in my videos and stuff. And people are like, "Oh, like they don't bother the plants that you have on the floor." And I'm like, <laughs> These dogs could care less. The only time I'll ever see them come up to a plant is right after I watered it, and they're looking for that drip in the, in the. Oh, really? They like to drink that in the that? saucer. Well, they want to. I don't let them, yeah. but they, they like they hear it. Like they'll hear it fill up the saucer, and they're like, "Oh, this is for us because it's on the floor." You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess the other thing you probably have to deal with with your dogs is their wagging tails, because I've seen a couple videos oh, where they're just like smack the crap out of a plant with their tail because they're looking at you for food or something <laughs> yes and pipples have like ha- we call it happy tail we're like calm your happy tail because they don't have any control over it or like where it goes and i have a cactus probably eye level to them and they've come so close to it so many times yeah <laughs> like so so one thing Patches did do when she was a kitten, because she was a stray that I had found outside, um, mm-hmm. is I had a fiddle leaf fig and another, my Xanadu, my philodendron thematophyllum Xanadu, in mm-hmm. pretty large pots because they're bigger plants on the floor. And I caught her very early on using them as her litter box and Ooh, if you yeah that's a good topic so she was just like digging her little hearts content through that soil and uh you know dropping some yeah. nugs and peeing doing her thing you know a good guest to have on today's episode would have been pam from <laughs> pam's yeah. pretty plants her little duncan bless his heart oh, he's but sweetie. he is just oh but he destroyed he's little, yeah he's a terror he just loves her plants and she's besides herself about it she's been posting in her stories it's pamela that's, on instagram that's the thing is like cats so like if there was a fly in the house that decided to fly near my plants and patches was watching the fly Nothing would stop her from jumping up there and knocking off every (laughs) single plant. She hasn't done it yet. Right. (laughs) But, I mean, she has knocked over a few pots and broken a few before, but nothing, like, huge and major. Mm -hmm. But if she sees something that she wants to go after, nothing's going to stop her. Yeah. Does she see fungus gnats? Like, does she 
see them? Yeah, when I had some before, she was like sitting on one of my plant shelves and she was just like staring at the soil of one of these plants and I would oh. just see her like snipping at them every once in a while, like trying to catch them in her mouth. Wow, we love that. But she left the plant You're muted, alone. Becky. Sorry, I, my microphone actually is not muted, so I just forgot. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's really interesting. The litter box thing I've heard a lot, unfortunately, yeah. they're bigger plants. I did not know that Pam was having issues. That sucks. Yeah, she is. She is. I think, I think Duncan, when he was smaller, so just like a few weeks ago, because she hasn't had him that long, was using her plants as a litter box. Like, she caught him going in there a couple of times. Yeah. But now I think he's knocking over plants. <laughs> Yeah, if there's a shelf they want to <laughs> get on. Thing. Yeah, the, the yeah. way I kind of, um, the way I went about trying to fix the whole situation of her using my plants as a litter box is there's a couple different options you can do. Obviously, cats want to dig when they go to the bathroom because in the mm-hmm. in the outside world they want to cover up any scents just so they remain safe or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But if you put like big river rock on the top of your pots, that kind of thwarts mm-hmm. them from doing it because they can't really scoop that. But okay. I also just put tin foil on the top of all my pots because cats hate, hate tin foil. Really? Like, I don't know if it's something oh, about tonight. the texture or the sound that it makes when they touch it. But if you look up videos of cats, <laughs> like people put tin foil on their counters if their cats are just jumping up there a lot. Mm-hmm. And there's videos of cats that like don't know the tin foil's there and they jump on the counter and literally they like rocket off of the <laughs> counter as soon as they touch the tin foil. It's hilarious. But yeah. Tin oh is a I don't think I knew that. That's so funny. I mean, that Patches is isn't like most cats. So I feel like if I put tinfoil out, she'll probably just like roll up in it because that's just what she does, <laughs> her personality. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's a, I don't know. I've heard of a few different like deterrents that people could use, but I actually talked about one of them on my stories and someone, a few people messaged me and was like, don't share this advice. And yeah, that's the pepper. Cayenne pepper. But literally, like, oh, really? every article I have ever read has said that. Yes. Like, and yes. So what's wrong with, with it being a deterrent? Because they will they could eat it and it could harm it could, them? Or? Yeah, it could hurt their eyes. Like, they they breathe it in. It's really painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, okay. well, from what I remember is, like, people said that like if they put cayenne pepper not people but, like people who say not to do this they said that it can get in the pet's eyes and then you know they just have paws and when something burns you want to rub it your eye burns you want to rub it and they said that some some pets have actually caused major damage to their eyes because they claw they basically are clawing at their eye oh, with that yeah. situation but you're right it's literally everywhere cayenne pepper was a uh, it's it's still everywhere, I guess. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's like that's just so crazy to me that something like that could go so like widespread and like, uh, that's like really bad. I've never well, had people... to use it, so I don't, you know. Yeah. So when I was reading, because I had some apuntia outside, you know, I'm just gonna not have apuntia because I'm having problems with my apuntia in many ways, but um. The squirrel, like we have this one squirrel in our yard who would constantly come back and just eat my prickly pear. I'm like, doesn't that hurt? But he loved, he loved it. He would just take like little tiny bites out of it and then walk away. Like every day there'd be a couple more bites taken out of the plant. And I did read for outdoor plants, like to keep pests and to keep like, you know, wild animals like raccoons and stuff away to use like a mixture of dish soap and cayenne or like lemon and cayenne or something like that and yeah so i don't know that's that's bad that it's circling out there to do that because i may have harmed my squirrel yeah little little jerk yeah i actually like you guys i was just so scared that i put that advice in my book i just looked at the manuscript and i didn't thank god okay <laughs> Like thank God. Yeah, when God. you posted, was your heart in your yes. chest? When you posted that story, I was going to like reply and just say like, "This is what I've heard." But then I was like, "I don't want to be that person." And for some reason, I already knew that someone had probably already told you, like someone had already said, like, mm, "This is wrong." <laughs> Which I'm grateful for people if they do it kindly. For, yeah. For you know, absolutely. Obviously, you mm-hmm. don't want bad information going out. Yeah, I feel yeah. like 
as a human on the internet, it's just expected you will constantly get feedback. And like the the faster yeah. I was able to like take that feedback and be like, okay, cool. Thank you for telling me. Like my life has been so much better now that I'm not like taking it personally. Mm-hmm. Like, well, you didn't understand what I was trying to say. Now I'm just yeah. like, oh shoot, right. like you're so right. Thank you for telling me. You know, like, oh, yeah. it's it is hard sometimes. Like it's a humbling. Well, plus you have to tell yourself. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you didn't interrupt me on my end. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) I was going to say, plus it's kind of one of those things where like you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And if you're reading it on the Internet as advice, then it's going to take like someone experienced or someone in the like field to be like, hey, no, this can actually really hurt them. And it's probably like veterinarians seeing it all the time or, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, as a deterrent, like Adam said, putting something in the pot that they wouldn't like. um, I saw like a picture Mm -hmm. online of like spikes, but not like hard spikes, just like, you know, like what you put up for pigeons, which I think is so mean. But I don't know if they would actually. Yeah. I've never seen a pigeon like, like, what is it when like skewered? Impale. Impale. Yeah. I've never seen pigeons like injured by those. I think they just see that and they're like, can't land there. All right. Yeah. Right, and that's what it is. I don't think that it's like to to hurt them. Although they look like barbed wire, they're kind of scary, you know. Wait, they are. My dad used to just hang CDs from our roof. Like we were that family. We had CDs hanging from our roof so that birds wouldn't CDs. land. CDs, because the reflection oh, like scares why? them. Why? I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that either. So you want to talk white trash? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I, I, because I've seen people hanging CDs from their trees. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Thought it was like, thought they were doing it as like a wind, like, what do you call those? Sun, like, uh, wind wind chime. Um, Yeah. Or wind chime or like a sun catcher. I'm like, okay, this is some hillbilly stuff. It's funny. (laughs) No, my family, my dad, my my dad is is not white trash. He's just inventive and finds ways to save money. (laughs) He's always been like that. It's just, it's funny. Wait, do you guys remember your first CD that you ever owned that was, like, your CD? Oh, my gosh, yes. Um, Me too. I had so many, though. You remember your first oh, one? Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> Probably TLC. <laughs> was... Maybe TLC. Yeah, Red Light. Uh, yeah. T- that was my first... That was my tape. I remember having that as a tape. But my first CD, <laughs> okay. I remember, was Aqua. Do you remember the band that did Barbie Girl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Either my parents are yeah. really ignorant. They just wanted to deny the fact that I was not straight. <laughs> <laughs> because who, who would own that? I did. Did you play? Did you have Barbies or no? No, no. I, I, I was never like allowed to have them um, kind of thing. But I'd, I'm uh, sure if I would have asked, I would have got them. It wasn't like a you can't play with dolls thing, but I've, I never had them at yeah. home. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you didn't have a sister That's growing so up, funny. so there was really like, yeah. yeah, no presence of girl toys, quote unquote girl toys. But I, I think, yeah, that pretty much sums up what we had for the the topic. I mean, yeah, yeah, being oh intuitive. yeah, Adam's got to go. Yeah. I do. Yeah. But that's okay. Oh, wait. Oh, this person right here, like the, the soil cover, they just cut out a piece of paper with a little hole for the plant to come out. And then the, another picture, they put forks into the soil so that the spines are poking up. That's what I saw. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a deterrent. Like, they're not going to land on it and hurt themselves unless you have a clumsy really really curious cat which some people do yeah. you know but yeah wait all right i want to hear your guys's first cds i said mine sorry that was like a random off topic thing oh. oh mine was i think mine was tlc oh yeah I think you said it TLC. was yeah i think so mm. but i also had black street remember black street no yeah i do no no becca you i think i had in vogue no. too Oh, En Vogue. Oh, SWV. There was oh, there's quite a gosh. few. I was a big R and B. R and B was my thing. Yeah. Nineties mm. R and B. Mine was Hillary Duff. So oh. <laughs> So complicated. Yes. It was the it was a CD that had like let the rain fall. I'm coming. 
Let the rain <laughs> fall down and wake my dreams. Let it oh wash gosh. away. You guys know the song. Yes. It was yeah, that, do. like, her sure. breakout CD or something, like, legendary. But I did have tapes prior to that. <laughs> I think I had the Faith Hill tape or something I used to listen oh, to. I love Faith Hill. Yeah, I had a Winnie yeah. the Pooh cassette player, and I would play my little cassettes. <laughs> oh, that's I would have cute. blank. I would have blank cassette tapes because you could buy like a pack of five for like I don't know two dollars, mm-hmm. and I would record like my radio station in Chicago yes. was B ninety six, and I would just record like they would have like an hour of commercial free, <laughs> and it was like all R and B or whatever, and I would just record that and make my own tape. Amazing, yeah, because, yeah. yeah. Back Amazing. in the day when we had to make our own mixtapes from the radio. Yep. From the radio. Yep. Wow, that's that's vintage. I didn't have to do that, but I do remember. <laughs> and I recently, CDs. I recently found one. I'll have to post a picture on on Instagram this week so you guys can see it. Like an and actual it says tape. Like, like a tape that says like Nicole's B ninety six. I need to find a cassette player so I could see what music is on. Yes, that. you do. And the quality. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I used to like download YouTube videos and convert them to MP3s and put it into mm-hmm. iTunes and burn CDs. So that's how I would pirate music. Oh, yeah. nice. Ah, I still nice. do that, Very actually. Nice. I still download MP3s from YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. But like that's only when <laughs> I need to use it like for a YouTube video, like if I need like a sound effect that I cannot find anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Like Or like yeah. a As the FBI knocks sound. on your door. Yeah, yeah, like, hee hee, I don't do that. <laughs> no, there was, like, LimeWire or something, but LimeWire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, mm-hmm. like, the day that I went on LimeWire to try it, that was the day it got shut down, actually, so. Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly Not enough. Not invited to the party. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I'm going to yeah. get a virus on my computer. I don't want to do that. And then I was like, screw it. I need the music. <laughs> Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but we do have to cut this episode shorter than we normally do. It's only been like 45 minutes, but... That's okay. We'll I make do, up for it next week. I do have a meeting I have to attend, but uh, we appreciate you all listening. And don't forget to follow us over on Instagram, at Potted Together, and also YouTube, the same name, Potted Together. And, yeah. Be on the lookout for that cassette tape pick yes we need we need to see this we need to hear the jams from this cassette tape you need yeah, to go I find need a, to get a cassette. you need to go find an old talk boy and just like play it oh talk boy home alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> fun fact about talk boy i know i need to get going but i'm still gonna say this is when i went on my first airplane ride we were going to my dad's house in florida and i was very young and my brother and i were flying alone and I kept a captain's log on my talk boy because I thought if anything <laughs> oh. should happen, then someone would find my talk boy. <laughs> oh, that is legendary. Do you still have it anywhere? No, I don't. <laughs> Dang it. And I guys, know. he's still he's still as paranoid to fly now as he was back. Yeah, sure am. <laughs> he presses record on his on his cell phone, just lets it record the whole three hour flight. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> well, Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. 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 Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra thin dress watches to solar powered statement pieces and everything in between, Movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.